Hi everybody, my name's Jazz and welcome to Families Against Bullying. This is 50 Shades of Purple Against Bullying Community Awareness event. This is our second annual event and thank you for coming. I appreciate that you're here. You will have over the next four hours one tremendous experience along with all the families that are here as well as some of our board of directors. I want you to engage one another, have a great time and get to know us because we certainly want to get to know you. We do all of this because we are absolutely the ultimate, as far as I'm concerned, activists against bullying and, and uh, advocates for bullying prevention. And throughout the course of the afternoon, you're going to see and hear some pretty spectacular stories about people who have overcome bullying, as well as people who are still struggling with getting through some of the challenges. But today is gonna to be about fun. Okay, we're going to have a good time, we're going to have great food, entertainment, but don't tune your ears off and don't tune your eyes out yet because right behind me, you're going to hear from our executive director and also a couple individuals that we interviewed so that you know you're not alone. Hi, I'm Marcia Bryant, the executive director for Fifty Shades of Purple Against Bullying. I have some of the best conversations with my 11-year-old grandson, and he never ceases to amaze me at his knowledge about what's going on in the world today. Recently at dinner, he asked if he could have some of my business cards to pass out at school because kids needed to know that bullying was not okay. He turned to his father and asked, have you been bullied? I was floored, and I immediately remembered why I got involved with this organization. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be a part of an organization that would eradicate bullying from our society. If you would like to join us, volunteer, donate, or you're looking for information or resources, please visit us at www.fspagainstbullying.org. And remember, together we can end bullying. And that question, have you ever been bullied? won't have to be asked at dinner. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining me today, and thank you for supporting FSP Against Bullying. One of the reasons I spoke to you about bullying and how you address bullying with your child is that I know you have a young son, and he's very active in sports, and you and your husband are very involved in his life. I see you all the time, and I've always admired your parenting. So tell me, when you're talking with your son, first, let's share his name, and when you're talking with your son, how do you have that conversation or that tough conversation about bullying, and has he ever experienced that in school? Well, um, his name is Troy. He's 11. Um, and mixed race. So... Um, I think I've, I've dealt with some issues with him that maybe I felt a little bit unprepared to deal with um, because uh, like I just, you just think of a specific example of him playing with some other boys um, well they were they were playing hockey like street hockey um, and when he asked if he could join them they said to him um, don't you know that you're black and you can't play hockey. And so when he came home to me with that, and this was the first time something like this had happened with him, it was it was difficult um, because his his response to them was, I'm not black. He was young and he said, I'm not black. I'm brown, <laughs> so it, it kind of went over his head a little bit, um, but I realized right then that, you know, we have to start early and talk to him about, you know, how you may be perceived, how um, people will, um, how people may treat you and, you know, you know, how you, how you, you need to just stand up for yourself and, um, how it's important to treat other children and how it's important to think about how you feel when that happens to you and, you know, try to treat other kids the way you would want to be treated. 
Uh, now, I know I've met your husband. He's a fantastic guy, and I'm sure he provides all the support imaginable to your young son. Uh, do you believe that your son would be comfortable with having that kind of conversation with uh, his father as well as you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we both talk to him, and um, for us, it's really important to keep those lines of communication open and, and to make sure that he knows that he can tell us anything um, that's going on with him and that as long as he's honest with us, we're not gonna be angry with him and we're just gonna support him and help him through whatever he's, he's experiencing. Well, thank you, Kathy. I appreciate your support and thank you for sharing your story. Hi, Natifa. Thank you so much for allowing me to talk to you today about bullying and how you as a parent talk to your children about it. So tell me a little bit about um, your children, their ages, and how you have experienced discussing bullying with them. Okay, so um, I have three daughters. They're nine years old, and um, this week there was an instance in their school where there was a child who was being teased about having lice, and the whole class was moved to caution and further. And my concern was that my daughters were participating in this. They told me that it was because the whole class was making the teacher upset by this, so they were moved. But my response was, you shouldn't do this. Like, this isn't what is supposed to be done. If you were that little girl with lice, would you appreciate the whole class laughing at you? And they assured me that they were not the ones doing it, but it's always important to take that into consideration. Would you want that to happen to you? How would it make you feel if that happened to you? And that's how I want them to, to carry out their life. And, and, and that's important and vulnerable because you should always consider how your actions make someone else feel. Well, thank you, Natisha. I appreciate your time. You're and thank you for supporting FSP Against Bullying. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Well, all right, so a little bit about me and a little bit about what I do and why I'm here. My name is Paul Max, you can call me Thomas. Call me Paul Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so what? Oh my god. <laughs> but I am a that's right, you know what? Look like I can't see my everybody blurred. <laughs> but um, I I had just had a talk this morning and put on makeup around 6 30 this morning. My makeup artist got up and said, Paul, it's early. <laughs> I said, yes, I know, but I got some things to do. I have not things to do for myself, but I have things to do for everyone that is out there that is fighting for a cause. So this morning, I got up, put on makeup, went down to City Hall, and they're doing, it's called March on Harrisburg, which they are seven-day march to Harrisburg to fight for human rights, civil rights, and the rights of corrupt government. So, yes. so they, they asked me, they said, Carl, we want you to do us a favor. We want you to come out and do the national anthem with the news. Can I go to school? So, yes. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 48 years old, so I am. Woo, you I'm look good. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I, uh, I went and so um, they said, you know, Paul, can you come out and do the national anthem? And this is a streamlined um, community. These are people not only from Philadelphia, they came from Florida, they came from uh, Maryland, they came from far and wide just to be there to fight. What's good? This is Amir. I'm Sing Sing. I'm Mr. Jones. I'm KC. And I'm Big Mike. There's nothing tough about letting somebody hurt you. Don't be afraid to get out of the situation. That starts by telling someone. As hard as it might be to tell somebody you're being bullied, 
never ever suffer in silence. We're, We're proud, proud to stand alongside 50 Shades of Purple against, against bullying in their campaign to increase awareness and prevent bullying. Everyone deserves to feel safe. Peace. So she's waving because she thinks that this is a still shot, but it's a video. <laughs> Oh, 50 Shades of Purple against Bullying and House. We're on our way to one of our favorite schools in the city, and that's the Andrew Jackson School. We're meeting Meredith O'Connor, and she's going to talk all about how to keep yourself safe and join our campaign to end bullying right here at 50 Shades of Purple against Bullying. Ciao. In schools is the fact that it's kind of a lot more interesting like you know, I mean, bullying is something that obviously means a lot to me, and because of you know what I went through. But people always ask how I was bullied. You know, it starts up on the ears and injuries or whatever. They always say, you know, like how did it happen? And um, it happens to me in like verbally, you know, physically, verbally, and then there's also exclusion where I felt like I was left out, or I kind of felt like I was alone. And the weird thing about it all is after um, my first song went viral, my entire life. It, it was like a 360 kind of turnaround. Um, I you know, went from being bullied to being stopped on the street for like selfies and stuff, and it was really weird. Good morning, everybody. All right, so happy Friday. I'm glad to see everybody came today. We've been working on attendance, okay? And we're also working on being good audience members. So in order to be a good audience member, we want to look at the speaker, we want to listen, and we want to be a good neighbor. So we are very fortunate today to have this very special guest who's going to talk to you. Meredith O'Connor is a pop star anti-bullying activist whose radio hit songs are loved by millions. Her music has packed out theaters all over the world and has had fans claim changing their lives. She was recognized as an anti-bullying icon by the city of Los Angeles. And she's here to speak to us today about why the issue matters. You're now a cyber bully because yes. you laughed or you gave the thumbs up or Good. You passed it on. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And even um, not saying anything, mm -hmm. like the concept of just being a bystander mm -hmm. versus an upstander versus somebody. I mean, really, when you think about it, any whistleblower or upstander, in the case of, you know, children, is taking a risk, mm -hmm. too. So there really has to be a strong motivation for someone to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it's it's risky. You don't know what the repercussions of, of speaking up for somebody else. You know. That's what so, I meant by education. Once you learn, <laughs> exactly. oh, I didn't know that. Okay. We'll yeah. do it so the more. training that they're giving them when they yeah. issue these Chromebooks, because that's part of yeah. they need it for school, and if you're caught bullying or being involved in that, then you, you know you lose the ability to do this. And right. Now you're singled out, and you know why. Mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. But having that training at the onset saying, and they have exactly. to go through and sign, they have to sign that they acknowledge the anti-bullying okay. uh, requirements, and as does the parent. That's so exactly. there's, you know, it's two-pronged, and I think that's important. Excellent. Yeah. I think the pledges are really good. I think that's, mm -hmm. a, like you said, two-pronged. That's the first step. Because it's one thing to say, oh, they're going to do something, but then, of course, you want them to actually carry out the action. So, and every time. Just quickly, I'm wondering from the educators in the room if is role playing or putting a potential bully in the situation yes, role helpful or not? Like to actually do it to them and see how they feel, or is that more harmful? No, actually, that's I'm glad you brought up role playing because um, I have an acquaintance who was involved in. Um, she ran a, a day camp, and it was um, they did a lot of role playing. Um, in order to help uh, create more empathy amongst mm -hmm. uh, the children who were attending. So you had the, the person who was playing the bully and the person who right. was playing the target, mm -hmm. and then they switched roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And yeah. It, that is like one of the most effective ways of teaching yeah. empathy. Mm -hmm. so.
we're beginning the setup for Arts Against Bullying Art Exhibit. We've already hung some of the work here in one of the corridors, as you can see. Fifty Shades of Purple Against Bullying, Arts Against Bullying. And some of these pieces are, well, all of them are just brilliant. So, hope to see you here. ladies so I understand you're here to volunteer for FSP against bullying family against bullying day at the Defren Mall so what does this mean to you today this means to me giving back to my community and just making people happy and giving them a fun experience Wow that's awesome what's your name Nicole Nicole thank you for being here thank you so much how about you what does this mean to you today I just love helping people and like making them like aware of like certain Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. And what about you, young lady? What does this mean to you to be able to volunteer to help the children who have been bullied? Um, so this is like a way to like help other children, and if they ever need like help, like if they can just like be themselves here. Super, super cool. Well, thank you for being here with Fifty Shades of Purple Against Bullying Family Day. Sometimes you may be hired in a job that other people want, and you don't know that. And so you walk in to a minefield. Mm -hmm. 